We've all heard of stories where people are asked to donate their kidneys to family or friends who are in need. But would you ever consider giving one of your kidneys to a complete stranger? Check this out. My son was born September 23rd, 1980. When Nick was born, it changed my life. He was full of joy, he was really inquisitive. I had a great relationship with him. Nick had turned uh, 21. Nick had left a message on the phone that he was going snowmobiling, but I was not home. When I did arrive to the house, I was notified by police outside my door that there had been an accident and that my son had died. Nick got launched off the snowmobile and um, suffered a um, skull fracture. And I left to go tell Nick's mother. She, she gave out a cry that I'll never forget. To lose someone that you care for greatly is a terrible thing to go through. There is a hole that can't be filled. I knew I wanted to do something to honor Nick. Uh, the National Kidney Registry started educating me about the possibility of a chain donation. It takes one altruistic donor to start the chain. I made my donation to honor Nick and his life, and that kidney went to a woman by the name of Sheila Whitney. I did not have any idea it was going to be as successful a chain as it turned out to be. Harry's story was just the beginning. What happened next? Something you could only imagine happening in a movie. I learned that Sheila had been suffering from kidney failure for over six years. I thought I wasn't gonna make it. I wasn't gonna see any grandkids. And I wasn't gonna see my son, but he turned into a man. Her son, Reggie, was a very willing donor, but was not able to donate because he wasn't a compatible match. I was the first kidney recipient in the Nick Damien chain. I decided to pay for it and donate my kidney to someone else yeah. and it was received by Keenan Chong. You're my hero, man. Uh, thank you, thank you. you. Literally, you saved our life. I received my kidney from Reggie Griffin and as part of the exchange, the next day, my wife gave her kidney to Sonia Castro. The Nick Damien kidney chain saved my life. People that are that are willing to donate their kidneys to strangers, to me are, I mean, beyond a hero. If it hadn't been for Harry donating his kidney to start our chain, I would be dead. Just one act of kindness from a person's heart, from a person's soul, you know, can change the world. I feel like Harry is just a part of me now. He will always be in my prayers. It is a ripple, just grows and grows and grows. I am a kidney recipient in the Nick Damon chain. And I'm a kidney donor in the Nick Damon chain. I am a kidney recipient in the Nick Damon chain. I was a kidney donor on the Nick Damon chain. I'm a kidney recipient in the I Nick Damon chain. I am a kidney donor in the Nick Damon chain. I am a kidney donor. I am a kidney donor. I am a recipient I am a donor in the Nick Damon chain. The Nick Damon Memorial Chain is a change of life for so many people. He is a hero. I want everyone here to see wow. the impact of that one unselfish act. Will the Nick Damon kidney chain please walk on out? Such a pleasure. I had never even heard of a kidney chain like this before. It's such an impactful story. Just, and it all started here. How are you? I'm fine, thank good, you. Good, good. And this is a special day for you, is it not? It's a very meaningful day. Uh, my son passed away 11 years today, and uh, so it's a difficult day for his his uh, family and his friends, but today is a special day too. It's a special day because his life lives on through all of these yes, people yes. here. This is an amazing story. So we have donors and recipients all together. 
And, and it, it just struck me, you know, in the last segment we were talking about immortalizing someone, and you have done that for your son. And I think it's just amazing taking something so heart-wrenching and creating what is essentially life for so many other people. And Black, I, white, <laughs> Asian, I mean, just everybody. It's just oh, so... Man. Amazing. And, and as a, a recipient and now a donor, like, how has it changed your life, Sheila and Reggie? Uh, first, I want to thank God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank, thank Dr. Bill for putting this program together. If it wasn't for the program, I wouldn't be sitting here on the stage right now and see all you good people in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. I was notified by police outside my door that there had been an accident and that my son had died. I knew I wanted to do something to honor Nick. I was the first kidney reception in the Nick Damien chain. I decided to pay for it and donate my kidney to someone else. You're my hero, man. My wife gave her kidney to Sonia Castro. I am a kidney recipient in the Nick Damon chain. And I'm a kidney donor in the Nick Damon chain. I am a kidney recipient in the Nick Damon chain. I was a kidney donor on the Nick Damon chain. I'm a kidney recipient in the Nick Damon chain. I am a kidney donor in the Nick Damon chain. I am a kidney donor in the Nick Damon chain. I am a kidney donor. I am a recipient. I am a donor in the Nick Damon chain. Harry Damon's love for his son saved so many lives. If it hadn't been for Harry, I would be dead. I feel like Harry is just a part of me now. He will always be in my prayers. He is a hero. And, and you know what's amazing is you look at this chain, every single member of this chain has made a difference and you are all part of something that will live on. And you know, over here, this isn't really the end of the chain, but it's the end of our chain right now uh, on stage. A as a recipient w where this chain started with Harry, how does it feel? How do you thank someone for life and um, it heals a lot more people than just just you you know my husband my children my grandchildren and all our friends all these people here it's it's just a never-ending gift and it's, it's truly the power of donation and Sheila mentioned the man responsible for coordinating this chain UCLA's director of kidney transplantation exchange program please welcome dr. Jeffrey Veal to the show Rachel and I were talking, Dr. Veal, about, you know, how unique this concept is, mm. how beautiful it is in a time where so many people are waiting yeah. and potentially dying, waiting for a donor to offer a kidney. So you've created something here that, that may be a little confusing to people at first, but it really works. Yeah. Well, that's the, I mean, it's such a basic concept that if you don't match your loved one, but you want to give a kidney to your loved one and your blood type doesn't match, maybe someone else can give your loved one a kidney and then you can pay it forward or pass on the generosity to someone else. And that's, uh, you know, having Harry here is really special because oh. he's unique because he's an altruistic donor. I mean, he, he gave a kidney to just anyone. I mean, he was like, out of the goodness of my heart, I just want to give a kidney to anyone. And Sheila really could use his kidney. I mean, she was in rough shape and now she looks fantastic. And then there's... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Now, Doc, I have to ask you, I want you to demystify this a little bit because yeah. people are at home are thinking, well, how can I get in on this? What can I do? First of all, can you live a long time? Will a person who gives their kidney end up living just as long as someone who doesn't? Yeah, well, I mean, they actually work you up pretty thoroughly. As the donors here can say, they've had CT scans, they can't mm -hmm. be diabetics, they can't have high blood pressure, they can't have cancer. So they actually, we take only the healthiest people in the population become donors. So you kind of bias only the healthy ones. But in general, once you donate a kidney, you live a, a very normal, long, you know, life and there's some studies that say you can even live just as long just as even little. longer potentially well, and the yes. studies that show altruistic behavior can actually add length to our life and a lot of people forget when you start talking about kidney failure this is truly bringing the quality of life back to so many folks how big is the largest chain you've ever overseen uh 60 patients Six so patients. there was an all yep there's uh Yeah, we'd have to extend the stage if we got all them out there. 
And that chain went all around the country. It was set up by the National Kidney Registry, which is a kind of a computer program and registry, because that chain, the kidneys got shipped to New York, to San Francisco, Chicago. Country, wow. So are we changing the way we look at this now? Because in the past, of course, this didn't exist. Is this going to become more commonplace, do you think? Well, I hope so. I mean, it already is starting to gain momentum. Part of the problem was to donate a kidney in the past, you'd have to have a big surgery. Sure. You have to have part of your rib removed. You're in hospital for a week. Um, you were laid up for two months. <clears throat> now that the surgery's done laparoscopically, the donors go home in general the next day. They feel pretty good after about a week. Right. So I think the laparoscopic aspect of it makes Thanks. the donors, so you don't just donate to a friend or family, you can donate to someone from church or a high school friend or even altruistically because the surgery is a little more minimally invasive. So, so, Doc, when it comes to a patient who's on dialysis, whose kidneys have failed, what's the average lifespan for someone if they never get a kidney? Is it five, yeah, six well, years? Well, that's, uh, that's disturbing is that uh, about 65% of people are dead within five years on dialysis. Sure. So That's only, why uh, kidney donation is really important. And isn't there a big difference between if you get a live kidney versus one that's, you know, been an organ donator that's been through a car accident or something like that? Right. There? So all these people were on the waiting list, the deceased donor waiting list, because their loved ones were incompatible or didn't match them. And so they're waiting for a deceased donor kidney that would only function for about 10 years. Where if you get a living donor kidneys, which these people have received, those function on average for 20 years. So you get twice the life expectancy yes. of the kidney. Yes. Yes. Well, the, one, the one caveat I want to add there is we, we are in no way diminishing becoming an organ donor. If you are thinking about becoming an organ donor after your death, we encourage it because it truly saves lives. But what we're talking about here is really reshaping the game. And you can actually learn more about the National Kidney Registry or the UCLA Transplant Program. We'll have links on our website after the show. And I just want to give a big round of applause to Harry, everyone up here. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. Can I say one last thing? Can I say one last thing? No. I, I just want to say one last thing. And that's if you look at this group, how variegated it is, and it just goes to show that who you think you're compatible with is not always who you, you think. I mean, there's different races and so on. Here we got white, black, Asian, Hispanic, and so on. And that for, as a surgeon, a kidney is only one color. Once you sew it in, it's pink. Where a kidney is one color. Just like the heart. They're all the same, exactly. Just like the yeah. heart. You know what? And it is obvious how much yeah. you care for your yeah. patients. Yeah. It's been an yeah. honor. Oh, yeah. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank you all so much. We'll be right back.